Hey there guys, in this video I'm going to show you an incredible automation, how you can automate anything using DeepSeek V3 and Meg.com. It's a bite-sized beautiful automation, but the focus of the video is how you can use DeepSeek in all of your AI automations and save like 97% of your cost, as well as loads of other crazy benefits. So, hope you buckled in, grab that coffee, I've got my coffee, I'm ready to dive in and talk about this. So, why are we talking about it? So, just for context, obviously DeepSeek is a different language model, uh, and it sort of originated from China. So um, think about that, what you will in terms of your data. But three key things to bear in mind. Number one is performance. So check out this beautiful performance graph. I'll pull link down below the report so you can get why we're interested, okay? So DeepSeek is this uh, blue and white one. So the models that we typically use, right, if we think about GPT-4.0, you can see that it's comparable or edging out most of them on many of these key metrics like math and at the sweet bench, blah, blah, blah. So you get the performance is pretty exceptional. Now, when it comes to language models and our AI automations, one of the things we often do is make trade-offs with the models. Where we're heading now is this idea of it's performance versus cost versus speed, latency, all these really critical factors. So I started to say that the performance of this model is pretty exceptional, okay? Uh, this thing here is on retrieval. So for example, if we gave it a huge context window, what is its ability? to draw information back. You may recall sometimes when you speak to ChatGPT or Claude that it starts to forget things in the conversation. The, apparently this needle in the haystack, which is for example, if you give it 128,000 tokens, what is its ability to withdraw information accurately uh, and supposedly it's excellent. And then finally, the cost, which is the crazy thing, which is why we're gonna use it in AI automation today. So GPT-01 uh, per million token input is around $5.25. DeepSeek is 14 cents. I'll put a link down below comparing all the different language models so you can see cost versus performance trade off. So with that in mind, what does this mean? It means cool. What's this 5.5 million? That's how much it cost to develop DeepSeek V3 based on training. Uh, but it doesn't include things like licensing data, but that's just in the GPU cost to develop it, which I think is pretty cool. This whole thing's open source, but the question is guys, how do we use it in an automation? So the automation that I want to show you today, okay, is how, for example, and I wanted to think of something simple that you could use. I want to show you how to use it. You can use it for any use case that you want to. So the automation we're gonna use in this video is you're gonna be on your email, okay? You're gonna get an email that comes in. And what we're gonna say is, look, I'm gonna forward it to an address. I'm gonna forward it to our AI brain, our deep seek brain. And what that's going to do, guys, is it's gonna create a response for us in HTML or if we do or plain text, whatever we want to, and reply in our tone of voice specifically to that query. And then it's gonna send it automatically to Outlook or just send it to your own inbox itself. Now, you'll know from the channel, I've done an automation using a RAG system where it's trained on your entire inbox and it knows all the context of everything that's ever happened. But for this video, I just wanna show you something simple that everybody can follow along with is bite-sized and you'll also learn how to integrate and use any language model that you want to. So as always, all the blueprints, the agents, the guides are all available over in the school community, which is all about the latest AI, incredible automations, and most importantly, guys, it's about the stuff that actually works. Go check it out. We've got a lot of really crazy stuff happening in January. I think you'll really appreciate it because this is the year uh, to take over on AI automation. So let's create a new scenario and dive straight in. Now the crux of this automation, guys, is gonna be something called Open Router. So what is Open Router? Essentially, OpenRouter.ai enables us within a scenario to use pretty much any language model we want to. Sometimes when we talk about automations, right, um, they can fail. For example, you know, they have token limits and the more that you use a ChatGPT or a Claude, the higher rankings you get and that lets you use more tokens per minute. But sometimes it means it can fail or maybe Claude is overrun and your scenarios fail. Well, one thing we don't want is scenarios failing. So what's cool about Open Router? You're gonna click on Open Router, click on Create a Chat Completion. You'll need to connect your account. I'll show you that in a second, but let me just show you how this works, okay? Look at this model. So it enables you to choose from all of these flipping free and paid models. It's absolutely crazy. You can use like models for free. Look, if I type a word in free, look at this. All these ones with free in the background, uh, free in brackets, are free to use, which I think is pretty freaking cool, right? We like free, free is cool. But you know what? On this channel, we're about stuff that really, really kills and works. So we're gonna use DeepSeek V3. And you'll see this thing here, enable automatic feedback. So essentially, if that doesn't work for some reason, Open Router is kind of like sitting between this U, right? There's Open Router and then there's all these models. So we can say, hey, Open Router, I want this one. But if that doesn't work, just get me something similar. Get me something similar, performance cost, whatever. So Open Router will do that for you 
automatically improving the reliability of the automation for you. Cool, so all we say is enable automatic feedback and then we can give it a message and do various things. So look, what I want you to do, um, I'm just gonna put content ABC for a second and then we're gonna go over and connect this together, all right? So we're gonna head over to openrouter.ai. I'm gonna create an account. I think it gives you like a dollar for free, but because DeepSeek is so cheap, it's insane. So once you've created an account, you can actually have a look around and browse and see what it's all about. So it's got all the different models you can have a look at. See, for example, DeepSeek V3 right now is number one in programming. The reason why it's excellent for programming and creating code is because essentially what we can use that for is create an extremely long like uh, context. Because like you think about when you're creating apps and things, and we can do that on no code um, tools, like, you know, AI writers and things like that. Um, it can just do that at an insanely cheap unit price, but I also think it's got an incredible use case, which is what I want to use here is how we can AI automate, how we can create text, landing pages, um, copy for social media automations, any automation that we've ever done on this channel, and there's things that we include in the school community on, on the YouTube channel, we can substitute and use it with um, DeepSeek to save some significant costs. Uh, and let me get some, some beautiful copy. Okay, that is flipping delicious. Cool, so this is the website. So have a little play around with it. You can see, see things in the ranking section here, like how they all perform for programming and what the rankings are. And you can come down and have a look and DeepSeek V3 it has increased by 3,800% on that. Cool, so once you've done that and you've connected it, it's dead, dead straightforward to do that. And to connect it guys, all you do is come over, come down, select keys, you'll see on this page, and then you're gonna click on create a key and then you just simply copy that and then paste it within your automation, all right? And you may need to deposit like a couple of dollars, but you get like a dollar for free, they're perfect by clicking on credits. Cool, so how's this automation gonna work? So the way I want this automation to work, and I'm gonna use Outlook instead of Gmail to bless our Outlook friends and family AI automators there. So the first thing we wanna do is come down and click here, and we're gonna go for webhooks, and we're gonna go for, whoops, oh my goodness, it does not want us to use webhooks today, does it? We're gonna go down for custom mail hook. Oh my goodness, what is a custom mail hook? Well, we bring them over here, first of all, to throw them in there. All right, let's have a quick look. Uh, right, cool. So how does this work? Basically, what we're going to do is click on it. We're going to add a new mail hook like this, and we'll call this one, let's call this one Deep Seek V3 BTG, which just means build together, and we copy this as well, because guys, we're not savages. And since Deep Seek's got a whale emoji, which I really like, we're going to copy that as well. Awesome. All right, sweet. Now we've got this random address, okay? Now look at this. I click OK. Let me just <laughs> rename this scenario, because we're not... Of all the things we are, guys, Savages is not one of them, and we need to make sure that we've got what we need. So this one here, we've got this cool little address here, and I check this out. I'm going to copy this to clipboard, click OK. I'm going to right-click. I'm going to run this webhook once. So what people don't realize about webhooks is it can also be triggered by mail. Um, so we can email a, a, a sort of like a custom mail hook, uh, and that will bring all the information over for us. It's actually what Xero does. If you have like a business, you have accounting software, when you send receipts and you make attachments, you, att you send it to this mail hook. I know because... It's my least favorite thing in the world to do is attachment. So let's head over to my email and test it out. All right, I'm in Gmail, but it doesn't matter which account this comes from. It's just sending something over. So look, I come to recipients, I type in basically this hook and I say subject to subject. And then body can be Christmas and good times. Okay, this is just a test, right? I come down. That's okay. That's fine. Okay. Oh my goodness. Get this thing out of here. Then we click send. I come back over to Scenario, guys, and check this out. Look at this. Subject to subject, text is Christmas and good times. So what that basically means, and the way that you do Scenario is anytime, let's say we get an email from somebody and we don't feel comfortable having all our data in a certain location. What we can do is get an email. We can forward it to this address and then we can say, hey, write me a reply for this email. Uh, basically, it lands in a scenario. DeepSeek does its magic. Uh, and then it sends and creates a response for us in our inbox so we can use it ad hoc as and when we want to, which I think is a really cool, simple automation. So we've got that now. The next thing we need to do, guys, is let's see what we've got. We've got DeepSeek V3. Now, the first one I want to do, add a message. I want you to use Brawl as assistant. I'm going to give it a system instruction, and then we're going to give it the data. But before we do that, we must, of course, rename these. So I'm going to call this one little share wave hand, or call this one request. Beautiful. I'm gonna come this one. I'm gonna name this one. I'm gonna call this one Deep Seek. It's cool. I just built out a full tutorial in the community, like step by step as a brand new beginner using Make and AI automations, like the skills you learn, why it's important. It's really flipping cool actually to come back down to real simple basics and help you get from like not knowing what you're doing to getting a point where you're flying. I really enjoyed doing that. And I say that because renaming modules is like a really small little hack that's that's helpful for managing your flows. So we got Deep Seek. 
Now, what the hell are we going to say to it? So first con first message, guys, I want you to click on Assistant and give it a prompt. Now, this prompt is just simple, just to create a simple automation how you use it, okay? You will receive an email and a set of instructions from the user. Your task is to create a response to that email in HTML format. The response must match the user's tone of voice as inferred from that instructions and provide context. Do not add any additional context beyond the email uh, response requested by the user. Focus solely on delivering a concise HTML structured as a reply that adheres to the style and requirements. Now, as you know, my other video, it can pull down every email you've ever had in your inbox as well as your tone of voice and make it amazing. This is just an example. And of course, we can add different tone of voices. So for instance, in the classroom, if I come over and I just type in tone of voice in a classroom as a for, quick for instance, I can see, yeah, okay, this is automation on how you create your tone of voice with AI like this, right? And then we've got all the different things. We have, like, for example, this one's really interesting. The segmentation prompt is what you use to create your own tone of voice. I'd, I'd encourage you to check that out, right? We use like 11 different things like vocabulary word choice, grammatical patterns, punctuation, blah, 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 to get to the point where essentially you can have something that sounds exactly like you. And a good example of that, so check this out. If I just show you, um, let's have a look. Where is the whole Mersey tone of voice? If I come here, I just want to show you a good example of what this physically looks like. So if I come down here, okay, here we go. Look, I check out tone of voice. I come over and this is an example of what it looks like. Look at word choice. And you'd basically get this document basically trained on all the information you've got, whether it's text, LinkedIn posts, um, YouTube videos or emails. And we have this sort of thing just to make sure the responses are pretty flipping epic. So we come back, but for the example of this, I'm just going to keep it very simple and basic. Then we click OK. And then the final point of automation is we want it then to reply back to our Outlook. So to add Outlook into the scenario, we're going to come down here. You might guess what we add, right? We're going to add Outlook. Come down, add Outlook. Now I'm just going to put create a draft. So this is the way that this will work. Let's just put draft, create a draft message. We choose an account. So add your account if you haven't done so already. Let's have a look what I've got. There we go. That's right, I think. So basically you come over, you sign in. You'll need to give it a sort of authorization. So we say, hey, that's fine. Do that for me. And then it loads. We wait for it while it loads. Cool. And then we set back. We love that. Subject. Okay. So subject is going to be your deep seek reply. And, you know, of course, let's get our patent pending whale in there too, right? Okay. Beautiful. Body content is very simply just going to be, oops, we're going to come over here so you can get, I just want to make sure you can always see it all timed. Come down message, it's going to be content. That's it. Important. I do like on Outlook how you can set importance. Like one of my frustrations with it though, is that like I find so much stuff goes to junk. Like people email me. I only see it when I go to, when it goes to junk. It's so flipping annoying. Okay. Let's just put one of my email addresses in and we'll call that Jack. Cool. All right. Sweet. Uh, that's the recipient star. Beautiful. Okay. And then we'll click. Okay. And of course this one here, we'll just rename this one Outlook just for the sake of it looking really cool, which I think is important. Okay. Come down mail. Beautiful email. I like it. All right. Sweet. Then we click. Okay. And all we do guys is we simply, where are we at right now? Auto align. Decent. So should we check out what this looks like? So if I got this here, for example, let's have a look at the webhook. So we're going to copy this address and I'm going to create like a fake email to give it like a question and see exactly how that works. Okay, so here we are. So basically what would happen is let's say we get an email from a random person and we said, you know what? I can't be bothered to respond to that. So what I'm going to do, I'm basically going to enter this email address in here. And again, you can save these as specific things. Subject, don't worry about it. And let's just say, hey, to ChatGPT, write me a random, um, random email about, I don't know, uh, YouTube sponsorships for honey not a scam did you see the honey thing by the way i thought that was fascinating how they're doing blast blast attribution thing that was really really crazy i wasn't sure about that um wild actually because when i used it i was like dude am i really getting like the best coupon code with this stuff so i stopped using it in the end but with all the stuff that we do about like ai automations and AI copilots and chrome extensions you can rebuild something like honey it's not that like we could scrape all of the codes online i'm going on a tangent you got you got to pull me back sometimes but you can literally scrape everything online uh build a chrome extension build an download it that actually physically works like you really 100 percent could do that and then just use your referral code from that if you want to like it really really isn't that difficult to do okay i've just changed this a little bit just to make sure that uh we've got some dummy data that we can respond to so let's come down uh, we come down here, copy this, Sarah Johnson at gethoney.com. All right, sweet. Come back over here. Okay, so I've just pasted the, the information in here, which is cool. Tech and trends with Alex. Let's come down. And let's say we get this email and we're like, okay, what do we think about this, dude? Is this right? I might just say something like, hey, reply to the below. Um, just say, try and get 
I don't know, 3K per video, um, suggest a call. But that's all I'm going to do, right? Let's just say that's all I do, right? All I'm going to do, guys, so basically our scenario, right, is going to be running in the background. But before we run this scenario, all we need to do now is basically add in the user information, right? So we've got the content from the assistant. So all we do is come on to add item. We're going to content is just going to be, let's have a look at the, uh, let's have a look text that's pretty much it and then we come down and we say user and we come down and then we click okay now that's done we can actually send the email and run the entire scenario to get a response for our outlook so let's come here we click on run once we come back over to the email per reply below try and get three clip of video suggest a call we'll come over but what we do guys is we click send yes it doesn't matter about the subject we come over to scenario then we've got the request has come through deep seek is now creating track completion which is awesome we have a look at what we've said has it got all the text yes reply to the below try and get 3k per video suggest a call phenomenal it's now working in the background and now we're going to have a draft message then all we would do guys if we just want it to reply to a message based on our prompt we can just simply forward it to an email address really accessible and it's also i think what is cool about this automation is it's something that we can give to other people right do you know what i mean like if you could say look if you're struggling with this topic just send it to this email and it will reply back to your email with a response. And just like guys, it has created an Outlook message. So let's go check out what that looks like. And I'll come back over to my drafts, your deep sheet reply, which is what we outlined. And it's given me this specific format. And the reason it's done that guys is because I just want to show you very briefly on this automation. One of the things I said to it, look, on the assistant section of the content, I said, this is how I want the HTML to look. And I gave it an example. So you can actually design that if you want to send it back in HTML. I did it just to kind of show you, but the bottom line is that it will do it. Come over to the email. And as you can see, guys, I included all the HTML here. So you don't have to do that. If it's a reply, it can just be plain text. That's just if you want to be cool and fancy and do that. So come back over here. Hey, Sarah, thanks for reaching out. I'm doing well. Thrilled to hear you've been in contact and blah, 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 blah. I'd love to explore partnership with Honey. Your mission's great, blah, blah, blah. I typically aim for a rate of $3,000 per video uh, for sponsorship of this nature, given the engagement with channel, schedule a call, which we could HTML, blah, blah, blah. And guys, it's very simple automation. Very cool. And that's how you can use DeepSeek V3 or any language model sentry in your AI automation. I hope you find this video interesting. Have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you in the next video.